Hello and welcome to this third tutorial in setting up and working in 3D space. Firstly we've set up our layers. We've got layers which are moved in position and rotation in 3D space. So this first layer 1 we'd need to look up at and then we'd need to move around and change our orientation to hit layer 2 over here and then again 3 and 4. So we need to create a camera and make sure the camera can smoothly move between all of these layers to give us a really nice animation. Now in the second tutorial we added this particle system so that we can give the illusion of moving through that 3D space because the particles are staying still, they aren't moving, they're static and they're going to whiz around in the background to give us a really great effect. So what we need to do is create a camera and then actually have that camera animate between the four layers. Now there is a very simple and easy way to do this. People can get very upset with cameras and maybe use a complex camera animation rig. This particular solution is very simple. It's actually just going to use copy and paste and I'll show you how to do it. The first thing you need to create is a camera. So you select your composition, go layer new camera and we're just going to choose a normal two node camera and I'm going to use a standard 50 millimeter camera and click OK. And I'm going to also create a null. Now the reason I'm going to create a null is that this camera, as you can see in this custom view that we've looked at earlier, is going to need to move around here quite quickly and as I've shown in previous tutorials looking at camera difficulties you really need something to drive the camera around. Now you can if you're in CS 5.5 right click on the camera and go to the camera tab down here and create an orbit null and that would do the same thing as I'm going to show you but if you're on CS 4 or CS 5 all you do is create a new null object so layer new null object and then make the null object 3D, so it's in 3D space, and then take the camera and parent it to that null object. So taking it up to the null object, and if you want to, you could actually rename that layer, just select it, hit enter, and call it cam control. It's always good to name your layers. So that's our cam control. So wherever this null object, this cam control goes, the camera is going to follow. So what we can do is we can select the cam control layer and we can select, holding the control key or the apple key if you're on apple, these 3D layers that we have so that they are all selected. And we can hit P and then Shift R and then we have for all of them position and rotation. Because bear in mind that these layers up here have been moved in position and rotation. I'm going to take my current time indicator to the beginning and making sure to deselect all these layers first. I'm just going to take my cam control layer because that's the only one I'm going to add keyframes to and do a keyframe for position and then X, Y and Z rotation because those are how we've moved these layers. So at the moment the camera is just looking in the middle of nowhere and in fact if we go back to our active camera you'll see that it's looking at nothing. I'm actually going to go back to this custom view that we've got and then at one second I want it to look at layer 1 and this is how you do it, this is how you do this technique. You select position and hold the shift key and go down to Z rotation and then you copy it which is control or apple C and then you select the cam control layer and you do control or apple V to paste and it pastes the position of that null object to exactly the same position as layer 1. Now if I just click on the camera you'll also now see that the camera is going from looking nowhere to zoom around and orient itself to look directly at layer 1. Now I then want to stay looking at layer 1 for a second say. So what I now need to do is paste again those same keyframes. So if you've deselected them, reselect those ones so you can copy and paste those ones there. So it's going to start looking at nowhere and then it's going to move through to look at that first layer and stay there for a second and then we want it to look at layer 2 so we go four to three seconds go down to layer 2, again select position, hold the shift key to rotation, copy, control or apple C, go back up to the cam control layer and then paste which is control or apple V 
and so now the camera is going to be looking here and you can go forward say we want it to look at it for one second go forward for one second and then actually because we still got it all selected we can just apple or control v once again and those same keyframes are moved so we can do the same thing it's staying there for a second and then go to five seconds and i now want to look at layer three scroll down to layer three so position and then shift rotation control c to copy Go back up to my cam control layer, control V to paste. Go forward one second because I want to look at it to look at it for one second. Control V again. And then finally, at seven seconds, we want it to go over to layer four. So we can actually go down to layer four, select position, shift Z rotation, control or apple C to copy. Go back up to the cam control layer, control or apple V to paste. And then we're going to stay at that till eight seconds and we'll end our work area there. So you can either drag this in or the keyboard shortcut is N to end our work area. Now we have an animation. So we're now in the custom view. So we're not seeing how it looks in the final view. But if I just hit the space bar, in fact, what I'll do is I'll select the camera so you can see the camera. Space bar, you see the camera it goes to one, stays there for a second, zooms to two, perfect orientation, zooms to three, and zooms to four perfectly each time then back to one so we know that we've got that right however if i just click on position at the moment or look at this we can actually see that they are very very straight paths now we can actually do things about these paths by moving or changing these paths which i'll show you in a moment but let's for the moment go to the active camera and let's hit the space bar and have a little look and see what we've got straight to one straight to two straight to three and straight to four and you can see you've got kind of a rotation in there as you go through now if you want those particle systems by the way to look a little bit better not that we're going to do this leave this on all the time because it slows things down but what we'll eventually want to do is make sure that we've got motion blur so it's this little one down here make sure the particle system clicked here and enable it for the composition by clicking up here and look at that so if i now hit the space bar you'll see zoom is a real sense of movement of acceleration and of rotation okay so that's what motion blur does but as you can see we've got quite a linear path between each one of these and also you might not want to have the whole screen showing like this so how do we change those things so that we don't have each of these layers filling the screen but we can actually change the motion path and we can maybe add a little bit of a wiggle well, I'm going to cover those in the next tutorial. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching.